With every week, it's just more and more Union victories and more and more Confederates in bondage. Hello and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me, as always, is Prospector Johnny. And this evening, Johnny, I uh, hope you're ready for some more good news because it's Union victory after Union victory. I'm always ready for good news, Lieutenant Tommy. Steamrolling you know the hell out of this. Uh, yeah, we're... I imagine it's still not the best news. Uh, for the rebels? That the war's over and... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's not that. Yeah, it's not that. But we yeah, are there. continuing our campaigns in the South to take more land, I hope. We, we sure are, Johnny, and this week's going to open up on the 14th of March, and actually really more like the night of the 13th into the 14th. But in any case, uh, Union forces underneath General Burnside with 11,000 troops are moving out from his successful campaign on Roanoke Island, where he actually captured yeah. 2,500 Confederates between the multiple battles up to this point. <laughs> 2,000 of those at Roanoke Island itself, so he's yeah. doing pretty good for Let's himself. Let's go. Uh, maybe this is the guy that we want to have. I mean, he has been crushing it. Yeah, he's he's been crushing it up to so this point. If we, yeah, I I maybe continue instead of concentrating on just demoting generals that are doing poorly. Let's maybe, lift up some of these guy? rising ships that we have. Yeah, this is, he might be the one to to. to promote push up but in any case uh this time he's gonna move uh towards the city of new Bern, north carolina uh it is defended by four thousand troops under the command of lawrence ob branch uh this force is mostly militia and horribly supplied and not really trained at all what a shocker and they really have no chance against burnside's you know well over doubled troops yeah. that are it's professional a <clears throat> Well, as professional soldiers, if we can get at this point, they're not militia. Yeah, it's a plan, the plan Combat is experience. to overtake. I, I say, and does he just run through them? Does he? Just... Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, well, ba uh, yeah, basically, uh, Confederates are gonna set up some breastwork defenses in the morning of the 14th. Uh, through the fog, with an incomplete picture of what was in front of him, Burnside orders his troops to attack the left at the railroad uh, with his first brigade, and on the right with his second brigade uh, near the brickyard. Burnside is going to be aided here in this battle, and I use that in quotes, yeah. uh, by fire from Union gunboats, which did hurt the Confederate morale, but then the gunfire was so inaccurate that Burnside had to send a messenger out to the boats to tell him to please stop because it was just getting not... Too close to us. Now, was that the fog's fault? Like, they couldn't see where they were shooting, I Yeah, assume? it's kind of the... It's a, it's a combination of the fog's fault and... And just well, poorly you know, trained soldiers. As good as our union has been Navy wise, there still has been. I mean, look, the, yeah. you know, our Battle of Fort Sumter, we fired like something, you know, thousands of rounds oh. and like no, nobody died. You know what? It's hard to shoot from a boat. It rocks, it sways, the, the, it does. the it waves does. are crashing. You're kind of, it's tough to be accurate. Uh, and apparently so tough that they had a you might hit. Say, Please hey, stop. Bud, just, just stop. Could you just not? move on? Because yeah. we would like to uh, continue. Not die uh, by our own fire. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, friendly fire. We Turn friendly fire off, please. Yeah, turn, turn it off. Uh, unaware that the Confederates had extended their lines beyond the railroad, uh, the Union charge, uh, while initially successful, was actually pushed back when they came under fire from the whole extended. They're like, we broke kind of through at this one point, but oh, yeah. shit, they're, there's o they're over there now. <laughs> and now we're Damn surrounded it. a little bit. Upon seeing this, sides. Burnside is going to order that the reserves of the 3rd Brigade come up, and upon taking the place of the 4th Rhode Island Infantry, a Colonel Isaac Rodman tells Colonel William Clark that uh, he thinks one more push is going to dislodge the Confederates. And, and he's right, Johnny. The Confederate line is going to break after the 3rd Division captures nine Confederate cannons that it was uh -oh. what is now the center of the line, sending the militia okay. in full flight, leaving General Branch no choice but to surrender the city. And some of his forces to the Union troops. Cause so not only they served the city, but they had to give up uh, some some force. Additional additional casualties, essentially. 
Uh, so the this... ones that had not yet run away, I, I assume, at this point. Yeah, the ones that have not really run away. <laughs> so the Battle of New Bern here, the Union is going to lose 90 killed, 380 wounded, and one missing. Uh, to the Confederates, 64 killed, 101 wounded, and 40, 413 captured or missing. So Burnside has racked up nearly 3,000 prisoners alone in this one campaign in North Carolina. So that is massive. Tommy, That's I, three I whole regiments gone. I can't help but start to take note of how um how much we've started to lose during this yeah we, uh, yeah whole, we we're losing some too yeah whole war not, not and, and i mean not not even just us the whole oh both sides yeah the whole uh, both united sides states, the whole yeah. country i mean it, both sides are still the united states essentially yeah. uh ideally <laughs> I guess. well well but at least we up in the north are still getting, saying we're all one get yeah. out of hand we're losing lots and lots of citizens and ex yeah this is citizens. quickly becoming this our is... most uh bloody uh bloody war ever yeah it's got to be close to it already at the, i mean uh, by i this think point, i think this i think at this wild. point we're this right there been, yeah it's been what almost two years a year and a half i don't know no, not two years. Yeah, we're a year in. A year and three months or four months, whatever. However long. Are we even a year in yet? I don't know, Tom. We're just about a year because, yeah, Fort Sumner. Yeah, yeah, we're about a year I, in. We're in a year any in. case, we have – this is – this is not the war that it, it was supposed to be. Yeah, and we're a year and four months from Lincoln's election, so yeah. Yeah, it was not. He hasn't even been in be office this. a year yet. Now, while all this is going on way out in Mississippi, in Missouri, or on the Mississippi River in Missouri, heavy cannonading from the 13th into the 14th proved too much for Confederates at New Madrid, and that city is going to be promptly abandoned by Confederates and quickly occupied by Union forces. So, in one day. Two Confederate cities fall to Union forces. So, on opposite sides of the country, On opposite too, sides of the country, yeah. Even, yeah. even better. Cheers for the boys. I mean, well done. We're right there. On the 15th, General Halleck will exonerate Grant of all charges that he placed against him and put him back in charge of the invasion of Tennessee. Clearly, he thought Smith probably wasn't doing the best work, although that's actually a lie. Smith got himself injured and, like, broke a leg, so... Oh. That's Time tough. for Grant to take over. So Halleck's yeah. like, all right, Grant, I know you were actually drunk on duty, but this whole story is being told by two yeah, drunk dudes, so what do we do? Just keep doing it. Just try again. Just <laughs> stop drinking so much. Uh, in any case, Grant is going to move more and more troops to Pittsburgh Landing in Tennessee, uh, with Halleck ordering General Buell to leave Nashville, Tennessee, and head towards Savannah. Uh, Buell is going to be delayed by lack of bridges over Duck River oh. and slowed way down. Yeah. So, yeah, they have to build the bridges, I assume, or yeah, they got to build the yeah, they got to build or them, do yeah. something. And ah, man, what a pain in the neck that must be. On the, uh, the 16th of March, light skirmishing is going to happen around Pittsburgh Landing as Confederates are trying to see what Grant is up to and what is, you know, it's uh, one of those exploratory, like, hey, how many people you got? Yeah. Take a couple pot yeah. shots, see what you got going on over so they, there. So I assume they sent, like, a small union or a small Confederate troop. Yeah, like a small, little, just like uh, a little scouting, scouting party mission. and yeah. take a couple pot shots at each other and then run away real quick. Yeah. Uh, and oddly, Johnny, way out in San Francisco, California, what? San Francisco, California. That's right. We uh, still own California. Still we just We yep. it's still a right. union state. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Uh, it is put under martial laws. There are reports that there is a rebel attack imminent, although I'm not sure how that's what? possible because the last cited Confederate positions was over in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which yeah. is a little bit away from... San Francisco. So who I think declared martial? The 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 the, the, the mayor, mayor, governor, yeah, yeah, the mayor, mayor over there, yeah, yeah. So I think Marshall the mayor Law. might be just getting just over the bit, city. Yeah, yeah, the city, not. Uh, but only that city needs to work. Yeah, not the rest of California. Yeah, the heck with the only rest of that one city. Only San Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This uh, sounds. Yeah. Uh, he might be taking a page from Lincoln's book. I think Little, uh, I... <laughs> oh 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 oh! I can have power. There's oh, a war going okay. on. Maybe they're coming out here. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Uh, Jack. On the 17th, Grant's going to set up his headquarters in Savannah in a mansion just north of Pittsburgh Landing, while McClellan begins his movements on the James and, New York, uh, James and York River, uh, you know, away from the rebels to threaten Richmond and his weird new plan of instead of engaging the enemy, we're going to, like, Go upstream and try to get Richmond. I don't know. I don't even know what so, that guy's doing. He's doing everything possible to not get into a fight. But Grant, 
instead of a man in a mansion. So we're mm-hmm. people are just out here just taking mansions. Yeah, that's what you get for being. And the people rebel. who live in the mansion are then just said, "You you just go do your thing. You whatever. It doesn't matter." Yeah. Well, when you Don't secede care. from this country, Johnny, the Constitution no, doesn't apply to you it. anymore. So that I whole quartering it. troops doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, we're going to quarter troops wherever the hell we want in the no, south. I, I get it, but um, also to be fair, those individuals did not. Well, you don't know that Johnny the mansion necessarily. They probably secede. had slaves. They probably had slaves. I mean, if they you probably, had a mansion, yeah. How if you, you had a mansion and you had that money, yeah, I guarantee you they had slaves. I guarantee you they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? There's not, right. these go go dig up your coffee tin full of gold in the backyard and get the hell out west. Yeah, Johnny, these aren't these aren't. You're victims. right. I'm sorry. If, if I don't you're know. taking a mansion, it's not a big. If if it was I'm a sorry. shed, if it was a shed or a shack somewhere, yeah, maybe. But, uh, but a mansion. Yeah, no, you're right. You're no. too right. These aren't. I don't. I don't know why I'm siding with the aristocracy on this. It's a bad move. On the 18th, the Confederates go through another uh, Secretary of War. As a current Secretary of War, Judah Benjamin is going to move on to become the Secretary of State and replace. Oh. Uh, he's going to be replaced by George W. Randolph. So the Confederates can't really get a Secretary of War that's going to stay very long. This is it's like pretty high turnover now. for a country that has been in existence for a year. Well, considering the official government's been in existence <laughs> for like a month, they just had their first session and they've already gone and through like, like, ah, cabinet members left and right. Hold on. Wait, I got to do more than just secede and be a traitor? I don't want to do this. No, not for me. On the 19th, it's going to see some more minor skirmishing in western Virginia, mostly revolving around the Union pursuit of Jackson's retreating forces from last week. Mm-hmm. And Johnny, did the we week's going to end. Did we, did we, ca- we didn't catch him, though. No, no we didn't catch him because the week's going to end with those same Union forces having to pull back from Win- or back to Winchester <laughs> uh, by threat of Jackson's forces when Jackson's forces get strengthened by a, a large portion <laughs> Yeah. So what happens? Oh, they've got guns. They've got guns. They got guns. So what happens is they're pursuing Jackson, and while they're pursuing Jackson, a large portion of their troops have to get pulled for the defense of Washington. Because if you remember from last week, right? Because uh, Lincoln said you have to order number three, two, two. That one was two, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was two. Anyways, two or three, uh, Lincoln says you got to protect Washington at all times while we invade Virginia. And so a large chunk of that troops that were pursuing Jackson had to get moved to Washington. And when Jackson saw that those troops were moved to Washington, Jackson went, we have guns. Let's fight. So they and and the Union troops went, and back to Winchester (laughs) we go. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, But Johnny here, uh, the final, final, final little note uh, is that because, you know, all this because McClellan didn't do his job and actually put troops where they were supposed to. Uh, But good news, Johnny, though, Burnside is on the move to Washington, North Carolina, and it looks like he's going to likely seize that city next week and continue his immaculate record so far. I can't imagine what would possibly deter his success. Put him in charge. Yeah, all this dude's been doing is winning. Winning. Like, yeah. Somebody promote this man. Well, we'll have to see what happens next week if he does, in fact, get promoted. That's it for this week in Civil War in Hindsight. If you enjoy Civil War in Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight. We talk about all kinds of fun historical things uh, that don't have anything to do with the Civil War, like uh, Samuel Colt's brother's murder spree.